Okay, uh, today uh, I would like to share with you my stories on uh, silverfish. As a top model, or world debate model in biological and biomedical sciences, uh, uh, this lecture uh, actually has two parts. Uh, part one is on genetics and toxicology, and then part two uh, on uh, human diseases. So we are going to cover this in two weeks. And then for week one, we are actually going to have a few different videos. All right, and my name is uh, King Ming Chen. I'm at the School of Life Sciences, Chinese University of Hong Kong. So, video one today uh, will cover the uh, natural history and phylogeny of uh, silverfish, and then with the second video we are going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of uh, using silverfish. Uh, All right, and then video three we talk about genome sequence, the progress, and then uh, the genetic studies involved in uh, studying silverfish or using silverfish as a model. All right, and then finally, I'll tell you more about toxicology and environmental studies using silverfish, uh, mainly from uh, some of my own uh, research uh, published uh, data. All right. So, silverfish. Why silverfish and what? It's silverfish. Where is it from? Okay. This is a picture of uh, silverfish. Silverfish uh, genus name is known as Daniel Ririo. This is species name. And it was also known as uh, Brachio Daniel, Frankie, uh, back uh, to uh, a few decades ago. But right now we confirmed its name uh, called Daniel Ririo. It's actually in uh, carp species. Carp is the leaf form. Okay, so in the genus of uh, Saprinus. So it was also known as Saprinus uh, trapalio. Okay, and also Saprinus ririo, Daniel daniatus. One of the major features of this fish is this uh, what we call the four stripes. Say The four stripes here going along the dark stripe. Uh, in between this uh, white stripe, all the way down from the body to the tail. And also the tail is short, and also you can see the stripes on the fins. Okay, as I said, it actually belongs to the family of carp or saprinidae, and also in saprinidae Alright, and the uh, name came from Brachio Daniel, from an uh, ancient Greek work, uh, Brachus, and meaning short, and hyno. Oh, honey is from this uh, uh, Bengalese uh, name for small or look like a minnow, a kind of another kind of small fish, commonly known in uh, North America or Europe. So Rio appears to be divided from a local uh, name or local uh, vernacular name for the species. Uh, it means uh, 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 short fish, a small fish. It's actually originated from the Himalayan, you know, up in the mountains, but it's actually not really up in the mountain and also could be found in the lakes. Slide is a map showing the Himalayan on top over there. Uh, this is Tibet and then Pakistan here. We have uh, Burma and also Bangladesh. Uh, this is India and also different parts of India. You can find this uh, beautiful fish and so you would expect uh, some different kinds of different strains of this uh, fish uh, found uh, in uh, India, or mainly in India, and uh, sometimes in uh, Bangladesh. Male fish is actually uh, having this uh, yellowish color, all right? And then the female fish is not that yellow, but uh, you can see a larger belly here, all right? And then again, you can see the stripes all the way down to the fins and also to the uh, tails, all right? the male fish and the female fish. The male fish is usually more elongated. And then for the uh, next slide showing you, right now we can see all these uh, different uh, strains of silverfish all around the world. And the uh, same thing is true that the uh, number of publications relating to pufferfish is 
has been uh, in the rise. All right, so the silver fish actually came from uh, Southeast Asia, mainly from India and Bangladesh, here in the region. Now moved into Wuhan and Hong Kong, Thailand, or even uh, Taiwan, Australia, New Zealand, European countries, and also in uh, America or in the United States. That even huge labs uh, using silver fish worldwide. So the wild tap fish that you can see with the four stripes and there are also other variants found. These are the common ones, like for example albino, without any color pattern. Okay, the melanocytes the, or the color pigment that would give rise to uh, uh, provide this uh, stripe pattern. And then uh, this is the one without any uh, melanocytes, alright, so this is called bakfa zhong or uh, albino. And these are all the same uh, genus and species of Daniel Rio. We can also find some uh, leopard, you know, with these uh, dots showing on the pattern. And also with the uh, long fins, these are the one with the, with the fins uh, and also the tails elongated. So these are the many different uh, variants that could be found well while. And uh, if you look at this uh, genus, uh, you may compare this uh, with other different genus. We have this uh, Daniel and also uh, Daniel Nana and then the Vario. Uh, this uh, would be in this uh, group of these different genus are uh, the close relatives. So one distinct which, uh, features that you can find is actually uh, from the uh, pattern of the uh, color. Uh, so uh, silver fish uh, you can recognize or remember there are the four stripes and then you can see this other genus uh, or, or uh, then you nana there's no uh, pigment at all okay or others with different stripes or you can see that uh, the melanocytes are, are missing I mean not really missing but they form into different pattern so on themselves the uh, silverfish relatives is actually a good model to study uh, pigments on the skin, okay, and uh, there are, these are the different uh, species as you can see the different different uh, 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 species here. And this is the one with the albino and uh, uh, or albinianitis, and this is the one without seeing any stripes. Okay, this with only two stripes, and this would have those uh, what we call panda-like uh, uh, features. All right. Or if we compare silverfish, uh, the Daniel with uh, oh, this one, different uh, species. This is real, real, and then these are the different uh, Daniel and the uh, Abinatus. And uh, this is the one without any uh, uh, pigmentations. And then if you uh, cross-fit them uh, together, we will cross-fit with this uh, Kayati and you can see the stripes that could form uh, dominant by re -wheel. You can see a clear features here but only one and two and three stripes. The top line is missing, okay? And then uh, you may cross this with uh, the Albaniatis. You can see the stripes coming back again. And, and so on and so forth. And see this one, these are the, the vertical stripes, the vertical stripe. But if you cross with them with real real, you can see this is a vertical, and then the vertical stripe uh, missing. And, and then that would be uh, the uh, horizontal stripes. We will uh, carry, this is a carrier, Daniel Prairie. You can see more distinctive features of the uh, stripe. So, in other words, all these different species, you may trace the different uh, color pattern or stripe pattern on the skin of uh, seba fish. Right? And uh, also more features uh, comparing this uh, uh, pigmentation, this is the melanocytes uh, that mutated, is called FMS hybrid. And then the hybrid uh, crossing, you can see obviously, the albino form is uh, maintained. Uh, this is the one albino form. This is the one uh, causing together. 
and then it is a mutant of FMS with melanocytes uh, missing. So, and again, uh, uh, among all these different Daniel, you may cross with them and then trace uh, their genetics relationship by studying their stripes and uh, skin pattern of the different uh, distribution of the uh, melanocytes. Okay, and uh, fish evolution. Among all these fish, why zebrafish? How do we compare zebrafish with other fish species? Now, we start from the beginning here. This is a uh, phylogenetic relationship of all these uh, teleos or bony fish. So, teleos is here, starting from here. The most uh, ancient one, perhaps, is the uh, Japanese eel. Uh, this is actually the fish that you like to eat, manyu or, uh, or baksin, okay. This is the angular forms, uh, angular uh, japonicus is the, the Japanese eel that we have in Hong Kong. Uh, the old days, were because it's so common to find them, so we usually can use them as uh, animal model. And then we move on to the carp or saprinoforms. So zebrafish is actually the model of saprinoform. The advantage of using zebrafish is that they are small. Comparing other fish that you may find in the market, uh, like a common carp or grass carp, they uh, have a significant size. I used to work on uh, common carp and also goldfish. Uh, for common carp or grass carp, it's good that you may buy a big fish and obtain a lot of tissues. And, but uh, you need uh, some big tanks of horns to keep the fish. And uh, moving up here, we have uh, salmon and chow salmon in some modern forms. And also, uh, 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 these are very good model for uh, research in uh, Europe and also in North America. Okay, we also uh, in Hong Kong other uh, group also work on this subtropical fish known as medaka, Japanese uh, medaka. Uh, 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 yu, and this is the kind of fish that you can find on the rice field. They have the freshwater and also the marine species. Sigman yu is another one quite common in Hong Kong called Cambelsia that, that they eat or uh, feed on uh, mosquito, larvae. And then Fundulus is a kind of small fish also available in, mainly in the US. And also the sea bream or tilapia. Tilapia is lawfare, you also quite common in local waters. Uh, they are more uh, 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 resistant to pollutants, many could be found in local rivers, including Seng Mun Ho and uh, Tai Po and so on. And yeah, pufferfish it has a smallest genome of about 400 to 450 uh, megabytes. And uh, it's the smallest genome in vertebrates, uh, so pufferfish in uh, daughter forms is uh, in a fugo. I'll we'll talk about this later, but uh, this is also an important fish, uh, but only in a sense that it has the most compact genome. So if we take a more detailed look uh, of what they look like, you may have more idea what kind of fish that we are working on. So we are talking about the phylogenetic relationship. Uh, Madaka is here and also uh, around uh, Fuko is also here. We have two species of Fuko, uh, uh, Taki Fuko and also spot green pepper fish, uh, Tetrodon. Uh, this, these two species and they have the most compact genome. And then uh, catfish and also uh, zebrafish, they are here, and then we have the salmon. So all the way here, we show you this uh, genome evolution. Around 600 million years ago, we started to have those uh, primitive fish. And then we have uh, hatfish and lamprey, and also sharks and rays, so these are not bony fish. And then we start around 400 million years ago, we started to have these uh, bony fish. We call these uh, teleos, okay? And then in the teleos, Zhan Guat Yu, at the time of around 300 to 400 million years ago, started to have what we call tetrapodization. Tetrapodization is that 
we can see that these fish they have four sets of chromosomes instead of just two sets. Okay, uh, and also quite common in carp. Uh, the tetrapodization came out. We still don't understand why uh, we had such kind of evolution. Uh, duplicate more genes in genome. Perhaps that's for evolution's sake. And then at the end, down into this Fugo, uh, the genome compaction came out. All right, so for the Fugo, uh, the genome size become more compact. All right, so these are the different models that we can work on. Uh, the trout species also have the tetrapodization. And then, uh, and then certainly stop. And then all these different fish, uh, they only have uh, two sets of chromosomes like us. Uh, another model like uh, free spine uh, stickleback, quite common in North America, and then the one that we mentioned, uh, the uh, tilapia, belong to the cichlids like uh, They are quite common in Africa, and uh, now of course they are spreading around in Taiwan and also in China. And then we also have other model like this uh, hongzhou yu or plate fish, uh, and also medaka. They are here. Okay, these are all smaller fish species to handle. These are mainly for aquaculture production. And same thing is true for food go up. People do raise them for aquaculture productions and so on. All right. So these are the, uh, the basic concept what we have about the genome and the fish. And so uh, what's next? We need to know about comparing all these two fish species quite common uh, other than uh, Seabuffish, we have, like for example, the uh, trout in uh, salmon, salmon yu, uh, rainbow trout, gong jun yu, uh, they could grow up to this big size for three years. Uh, however, for one year or usually within half a year, we can get uh, uh, maturation of this uh, fish, of seabuffish, within six months. Okay, you can see that uh, for silver fish, it's a tropical fish species. Uh, they spawn all year round, every day, if you feed them well, and then you keep the temperature up to 28 degrees, they will be able to lay eggs. And the eggs or embryos are fertilized eggs developing into embryo larvae. They are transparent. So comparing with a rainbow trout, only one to two months in a year that would have eggs and sperm for spawning, spawn once a year and then they are not transparent. Uh, like other fish, uh, they have the egg yolk here to be reabsorbed and that would take only a few days or within one week for the reabsorption of the uh, egg yolk. And, but then for larvae, it would take about a few months to, to prepare a larvae. Okay, the unit here is DPF, day post fertilization. And the unit here is hour post-fertilization or HPF. So around uh, 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 10 weeks you can find this uh, juvenile and then develop into adults and then it usually take years for salmon or other fish species to develop into, into adults. Okay, so the generation time is rather short. And comparing uh, silverfish with other models, so we keep saying that it's a good model because it could represent other vertebrates. So this is the phylogenetic relationship in uh, tetrapods, uh, fin fish, lung fish, and then uh, other amphibians and other animals. Obviously, if we, if we want to study uh, human beings, uh, we have to find some mammalian models like mouse or, or, or rat. Okay, you notice the difference uh, of these different models. The main difference is in the immune system. Uh, in mammals or primates, we have uh, platelets. And here, for silverfish and also other animals, like birds or amphibians, we have uh, thrombocytes. And then for other invertebrates, uh, uh, there are amoebocytes. In like, for example, this is for uh, limitus or uh, horseshoe crab. So, uh, other than that, uh, basically all the genes or most of the uh, features are quite conserved. The facts on uh, silverfish and the strains that we use, uh, 
give you more details is that uh, this little fish we can keep them in the lab small and then uh, small in terms of the size of a uh, 2 to 3 cm long with uh, distinct uh, four stripes and their lifespan is five years uh, puberty a few months we keep them at 28 degrees so it's a tropical uh, fish species Chromosum lumbar is 25 the genome size is bigger than uh, uh, Fugo or purple fish, so it's 1.7 times 10 power 9 base pair or 1700 megabyte. Uh, Fugo is around 400, <coughs> 450. The average clutch size uh, they, they could lay eggs, each female could uh, provide 300 eggs. We may fit them with live uh, animals like uh, paramecium, rotifer or brine shrimp. In our lab we usually keep them in uh, brine shrimp. We buy from Texas those brine shrimp egg and then hatch them every day. So every day they have this brine shrimp nap here uh, for them to feed on and then they become very active in spawning. So this is the fish that we are working on uh, with all this uh, special feature of the small size. So it has become a more popular model. The father of, uh, of uh, silverfish uh, was uh, George, George uh, Zenger. Uh, he passed away in 1984, but he was the one, he was a microbiologist using all these different concepts from molecular biology and microbiology uh, to, to raise uh, uh, silverfish in the University of Oregon. And then also along the line uh, from the same uh, university, Mark D. Westerfield, uh, he also published a lot of good books on, uh, on uh, silverfish and Charles Kimmo, and then Judy Eisen, and then also uh, John, uh, they are also from the same research group. And they also formed this uh, sec fin, I'll come back to this later, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, websites providing uh, much about uh, all this superfish uh, information, a huge amount of information. Of course, I have to mention uh, Christian or uh, Christine. Christian Nosnang uh, 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 uh she won the Nobel Prize in 1995, uh, according to her uh, citation from what she talked about superfish, would make an enormous contribution to our understanding of organ formation and the function of human genes. So uh, nowadays uh, we have these uh, different stock centers keeping different strains of uh, silverfish uh, from uh, Eugene, uh, Oregon in the United States. There's a silverfish in the National Resource Center. And also in Europe, in Germany, there's also European silverfish resource center. And of course in, in, in China, in Wuhan, there's a China Silverfish Resource Center as well. They all keep different uh, lock out, uh, charge in exchange, and um, different strain of wild types. For the online resources, uh, you may search for very useful information from uh, this uh, ZFIN, ZFIN Silverfish Information Network, and also organism uh, database. Uh, the genome largely available from this uh, silverfish uh, ensemble and uh, there are also silverfish uh, mutation project and also uh, mutation done by insertion okay so these are mainly uh, database for the Sanga Institute who started to I mean which in which uh, lab they started to sequence the genome of silverfish uh, around uh, 20 years ago and then uh, also with the availability of the genome database, the scientists could do insertional mutation. So these are useful websites that enable us to obtain useful information to work on silverfish. So uh, uh, in China, most uh, people like to get silverfish from Wuhan. And also uh, if you want to get more other information, you may get from Zephyr, you may register on the site and then you get all the information. Uh, let's take a look at all the different strings we have uh, in uh, different places. Like for example, this diagram taken from this paper comparing different uh, strains of uh, silverfish 
like the one from India, they call it W-I-K, Wild India Kolkata. The one from Germany is to Beacon, uh, is actually known as T-U strain. And those from the U.S., uh, we used to call it American born, and that's why it's called A-B. But some people say, okay, because it's from pet shop A and B, because those fish are available in different pet shops. So uh, scientists start to obtain fish from different pet shops. So we uh, used to get the fish from uh, Mong Kok, you know, it's a very famous shop that all academics in Hong Kong uh, went to buy the fish. And now, of course, we all use AB strain. And actually that one in Mong Kok's from AB, how do we know? Because uh, my postdoc and I actually, we compared the mitochondrial genome for various uh, Daniel Rewheel strains available. We put into the whole uh, mitochondrial genome or MT genome. And then uh, with the uh, phylogenetic analysis, you can see that uh, TU, KT, sorry, uh, HL and AB, they are more close together. And then WIK, SJD, they're more close together. But basically, their genome are highly likely similar with up to 0 0.99, or some, of course, with 0 0.999. But 99% uh, of the genome sequences are the same as represented by the mitochondrial genome. Okay, so all in all, what we can say is that we have a collection of these reliable uh, tropical fish species for all kinds of research. For the different kinds of research in the coming videos, we'll talk about that. And then all swings have a single nucleotide polymorphism or SMP, but they are almost identical genetically. All right, the different strains like the TU or AB or the one from Hong Kong and so on. Uh, from embryo larvae to adults uh, within a few months and you can obtain a transparent embryo and larvae for developmental studies. Uh, because they are small, we can keep lines in miniature scale. Because they are small, we can keep and obtain offspring and we can use a small place to handle them. And uh, we can do developmental studies and genetic manipulation because the genome sequence is almost uh, completed. And then uh, there's also a very reliable scientific community to work with. What you need to do is to register in this uh, SEPFIN uh, Silverfish Information Network, and then you can get all the information that you want. And then with this, we finish uh, video one, and then the next video, we'll talk about advantages and disadvantages of silverfish. Okay? Bye-bye.